It's time for Monday Evening Driver. Getting set to go here. Coming to Victor Lane right now. <laughs> God, I love this place. Good job, boys. With Jeremiah and Fish on the highway. It is that time for Monday Evening Driver. Kind of like Monday Morning Quarterback, but we talk all things NASCAR here on the New River Building Supply Afternoon Show. Jeremiah Farmer bringing it to you from inside the Discovery Chevrolet Buick GMC studio. And we bring in our Monday Evening Driver co-host, host host of the All Request Short Order Lunch, Brian Fisher. Hey, thanks for having me back, Jay. Uh, Fish, our record of... Picking incorrectly, the champion <laughs> Continue. continues. But, you know, last week, uh, after I made that pick, I spent all last week saying, you know, I should have picked Truex. Yeah. Should have picked well, Truex. and we talked about that last week. You know that he was going to be fast. I mean, he's been the fastest car all year long. Yeah. Congratulations to yeah. him. He's your 2017 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series champion. I tell you, and really congratulations to all the champions for the weekend. Christopher Bell picking up the championship in the truck series. You and William Byron. Man, what a battle that was at the end of the race between him and his teammate Elliot Sadler. Elliot, uh, uh, of course, probably one of the most devastating losses of his career. I mean, he's he's wanted this Xfinity Series yeah. championship. You had to feel for him, but you had to be excited as well for William Byron. And then, of course, you know, all the feels on Sunday with Martin it, Truex. It was so good to see a driver who has dominated the year get the championship win. We used to see that all the time under yeah. the old point system. The, the dominant driver won the title. We don't see that every year under yeah. this new point system. Yeah. But to see a guy who's been so dominant on mile and a half, and he didn't have the best car yeah. uh, like he usually does on mile and a half last night, but he was able to hold off a charging Kyle Busch. Yeah, I mean, you had to be excited. Yeah, I was telling you earlier, I don't think I've ever felt so many emotions watching a NASCAR race. It wasn't the most dramatic thing, but it was probably the most emotional race that I've ever experienced, especially Mm -hmm. watching on television. You've got three big-name drivers that aren't coming back next year. The majority of that centered around Dale Earnhardt Jr. and kind of going through the day and watching him as, as he makes his final preparations for his final cup start. You know, then you got Matt Kenseth and, and Danica Patrick that's not coming back. I thought that was really cool that Dale asked Matt Kenseth to go to the back with him mm-hmm. to start the race and, you know, see him high-five all the, the crew yeah. members going down pit road to start the race. Kind of reminiscent of when his dad won the, the 500 mm-hmm. at Daytona. And then you've got this emotional story of Martin Truex, him and Victory Lane, man, it just it put a smile on your face. To see him with the emotion that he had just made it all the worthwhile. Yeah, I would love to see somebody juxtapose those those two side by side videos of uh, Earnhardt Senior going down pit yeah. lane and Junior. That would be really, uh, cool. really something to see. Ain't it amazing though? You know, when Toyota came into this sport, I think we all kind of snickered a little bit. Like, <laughs> what's, yeah. what's these Camrys? It's a going Camry, through? yeah. My grandma drove a Camry. And like, not, what's up with that? not only have they been so dominant, and not only are they champion once again, but you've got a team that's not located in the southeast, that's not yeah. from Charlotte, that's out of Denver, Colorado. <laughs> And not only competed for, but won the championship. Well, of course, you know they, they are a, uh, they get all their stuff from Joe Gibbs. Mm-hmm. Joe Gibbs has been fast all year, but that's what this group did was they took Joe Gibbs' equipment and beat their tail with it all year yeah. long. I mean, this Denver Mattress Company, this Denver you know Mattress Racing Company, they pay Joe Gibbs a lot of money. I mean, millions and millions of dollars. To, to get that equipment from them, and, man, they put it to good use. They yeah, they did. they did. So hats off again to Truex. Eight wins on the year, and he won the one that counted most at Homestead Miami Speedway for his first ever championship. Talk about uh, his journey as a driver. You know, he said many times when Michael Waltrip Racing folded, he thought his career was over, and he was, I mean, he was mediocre at yeah. best at MWR. Wasn't really a thought to to win any races. He might luck up and win one or two a year. Kind of went off on shady terms with that whole uh, wrecking last race before the chase started. Yeah. And then he's just had a rebirth as a driver at at a not so young age, considering the sport. Yeah. Well, and and honestly, I attribute a lot of that to to his girlfriend, Cherry Mm -hmm. Pollock. I mean, we all know the story that she's been through battling cancer, still going through treatments. Um, she missed a race a couple weeks ago because going through some yeah. chemo treatment, she was sick that weekend. But you can tell that she's had a really big influence on the way that he has handled his career since moving away from Michael Waldrop. He could have easily gave up and said, you know, I'll go uh, race dirt cars, race mm-hmm. late models, and make a good name for, for myself, uh, you know, and, and make a good living. But I, I really think that she got a hold of him and said, listen, if I'm going through this and this is all you're facing, and you see what happened, man. It's kind of been a, a storybook ending 
for the two and, and even more bigger things on the horizon for, for both of them. I mean, that's that's what makes this sport so great is you get you kind of get to see that personal side of these drivers and their families and, and kind of what they face and how that uh, attributes to their on-track experience as well. Yeah, somebody, by the way, get Cole Perner Razor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was happy beard and all in victory lane. Now, Fish, NASCAR season's over with, but we're going to have you back next week for Monday Evening Driver. We're going to yep. recap the season talk uh, Dale Jr. Uh, Hall of Fame hopes and yep. also make some predictions for next year. Does that sound okay there's, to you? Man, there's so much going to be going on uh, as we go into next year. It's cra- I, I'm interested to see what happens in the off season. I mean, you know that there's going to be a lot of stuff going yeah. on. It'll happen on the next edition of Monday Evening Driver, which you'll hear next Monday, and you can catch fish tomorrow from 11 to 2. That's right. We'll be taking your requests all show long, so join us then. That's all coming up tomorrow, and we're back to the New River Building Supply Afternoon Show now.